If you were to pin me down and tell me that there's only one sport that I could photograph for the rest of my sports photography career, but I had to name what that sport was, I would have to say football. And by that, I mean American style football, not that other thing, soccer. I have been a huge football fan since I was a kid. I I played it Pop Warner football when I was little, not that great. I played some uh, high school football, also not that great, but I loved it. When I went to Arizona State University, I was shooting college games on Saturday nights, followed by pro football games on Sundays. These days, I mostly shoot club, high school, and now some junior college football teams, and I'm really loving it. I am really excited today because today is the first real game of the season for high school football, and I'm taking you with me. And before we can go shoot some football, we need to talk about some gear. All right, I just made another video, which I will link down below, and I went extensively into all the different gear I use, <laughs> cameras, lenses, accessories, so I'm not gonna go through all that right now. If you want more detail, go down below, check out that video after you watch this one. So I'm just gonna go through my stuff real quick. So what I do is I photograph with two different camera bodies. I have a Nikon D5, a Nikon D850. D5 is used for my longer telephoto lenses. It's my primary camera. 95% of the photos are gonna go through this camera right here. For my shorter telephoto and wide angle, if I occasionally use it, I use my Nikon D850. Now, I would love to have two D5s, but this is what I got. So, use what you got. This camera is an awesome DSLR, maybe the best one ever made, but uh, it doesn't have as high a frame rate, nine compared to 12. Uh, it doesn't focus quite as fast, and I have noticed that it doesn't handle low light, at least in my opinion, as well as the D5. So it gets used for my shorter telephoto lenses. Speaking of lenses, if this is a daylight game, I'd probably use this. This is my Nikon 200-500-5.6. The problem is, for night games, 5.6 is just way too small an aperture, and it's just not enough light. Uh, so, unfortunately, I have to do this. <sighs> This is a big old heavy Nikon 400-2.8. This is an older model, so it's very, very heavy, actually. Um, it's a great piece of hardware. It's extremely, um, it's extremely sharp and focuses great, and I love it, except it's big and heavy. So this is, so D5 goes on this for 95% of the photos that I take tonight. On the DA50, I'm gonna put this lens on it. This is a Nikon 70-200. F28. Uh, this one will get used for maybe some sideline stuff, uh, stuff during warm-ups, and during the game, especially when they get close to the end zone, I go behind the end zone and shoot into it, and that 200 millimeter is just about perfect. So that's when this gets used. Beyond that, I have a monopod, which goes on the 400-28. And that's, you know what, that's about it. That's all I'm gonna take out there. All right, now that we have our gear, we need to put some settings on those cameras. One one thousandth of a second. That is your starting point. Look, you can go below that. You can do 800, 640, one five hundredth of a second. But I gotta tell you, the, the lower you go, and I wouldn't go below one five hundredth of a second, is the lower you go, the more movement you're gonna get, especially in the hands and the feet. So one one thousandth of a second is pretty much my starting point. F-stop. If you don't have a, a lens that goes down to F2.8, you're gonna be struggling on some of these fields that we go at. <laughs> Unless you're a pro and you're shooting on these, you know, pro NFL, NBA, courts, fields, whatever, you're gonna be in pretty poor conditions. I really recommend you get a lens that goes to F2.8, whatever that is. Uh, it's gonna cost more, but you're gonna need that extra F-stop down there. All right, let's talk about ISO. I go auto ISO, and a lot of people argue this point. Here's what I have found about high school or even some college fields at smaller schools is they ver the, the lighting conditions vary across the entire field. The center of the field may be actually in pretty good shape. Uh, Sidelines off to toward the end zone, you'll have wide variations. You may have a three stop difference between the inside the end zone and the center of the field. So that's why I go with auto ISO because things are constantly moving, constantly changing. It's very hard to keep up. Some people argue this point, and that's fine. You can put them in the comments, but that's what I recommend. Now let's talk about white balance. What do you think I'm gonna say with white balance? I recommend auto white balance. Now, 
if you're shooting during the day, bright sunlight, sure, put it on bright sunlight or put it on daylight, that's fine. Put it there, leave it there, that's fine. But once that sun goes down or you start to get a mix of, you know, the fading sunlight along with uh, some of the lights from the stadium, your white balance is gonna change constantly. The other problem I see at a lot of these fields, once the sun goes down, it's completely dark, is the white balance shooting one direction is different than the white balance going another direction. So even if you get out there with your white balance card and you take all your measurements and everything, it may be only good in one spot in one area on the field and it'll be completely different somewhere else. I've gotta be honest with you, I've just learned to set out a white balance, about 90% correct usually, and then fix it in post. So there you go. Final thing, if your camera is capable of something called anti-flicker, I suggest you put it on there. Not all cameras have it, it's usually the little more expensive ones have anti-flicker. Basically what's happening is the lights of these fields are cycling and then they cycle so quick you cannot see it with your eye. However, depending on when the frame is fired in the camera, it'll pick up variations in light levels and color levels from that flicker. If you have anti-flicker set on your camera, the camera will actually see these things happening and adjust when it fires the shutter to get the best picture possible. All right, so that's enough to get you started on settings. If you need more information on settings, another video down below. I go extensively into how to set up your cameras. All right, enough talk. Let's go shoot some football. I'm headed out to the game. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm a little concerned about this game because it's at a small school that I've never been to. And last time I went to a very small school that I've never been to, it was it was pretty ugly. Uh, they were actually using rented construction lights, you know, those kind that are like gas powered. That's what they were using to light the field. Uh, I did check it out on uh, Google Maps. It looks like a normal football field, but who knows what I'm gonna find when I get there, so fingers crossed. All right, we're coming up on the school and I, I do see like, you know, football field floodlights, so that's a good sign. So hopefully the uh, evening just keeps on getting better, we'll see. I am, look at that. Okay. What's your name? Jack Beasley. Okay, I'm not sure if you're on this list because I think this is just coaches, but I did, I believe, get your email saying that. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, that. last All week. Right. Yeah, All right. All right, I'll go grab my stuff, thanks. All right, thanks for coming. All right, easy peasy, getting easy. So, cool thing about Max Preps is we have an arrangement with the local athletic association, so I get, I get media passes to get in. It doesn't cost me anything. to walk you through the door, which is cool. And coaches, referees, as soon as they, they see this, they don't give me any trouble. In fact, they welcome me in. So that's, uh, that's a cool thing about being with Max Preps. I'm not sure that they, they've got that set up in every single state, but in Arizona, they've got it. All right, let's talk some strategy right now. So I'm here during warm-ups, and this is the best time of the day or before the game to uh, catch a lot of players in action who don't normally get a lot of play time. Well, they're out here playing and they're in uniform and this is the best time to catch those photos. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. After the game starts, uh, you know, I got the 400 to 8, I have the 70 to 200. Basically, I'm gonna stay on the sidelines. Now, it's an important thing, you need to stay out of the box that the players are actually in, the players and coaches are in. It's just a courtesy thing. They don't want you in there. They don't want you in the way. There's another thing is you need to stay back from the actual side of the field. There's a couple of dotted lines and you need to stay behind those dotted lines. Those are there so the referees kind of run up and down the field. The other thing is there's a chain gang that goes up and down the side of the field, usually on 
the uh, visitor side of the field. They need that space to get in there, so stay back behind that dotted line on the field. All right, let's talk a little more strategy. So I photograph as much of the arena or the activities going on in the game as possible. That includes uh, coin tosses and uh, the uh, playing of the national anthem. Now this is a tiny school that I'm at. We're not gonna have a lot of cheerleaders or the band or anything like that, unfortunately. However, if they did, I would be taking some of those photos because you'd be amazed at what sells. So tonight, it's just gonna be all about the football players, uh, and that's fine, I'll shoot lots of photos for that, and we'll make the best of it, all right? I think I got like a totally awesome photo of the uh, receiver bobbling the ball on that last play. It looks okay on the screen back of the camera and I won't, I won't know until I get back. So I was really concerned about the lighting on this field with these LED lights, but actually they're pretty darn good. In fact, it's one of the better lit fields I've ever been to, so. So far, so good. I think the photos are probably going to come out all right. Come on, gentlemen, we got a score. Guys, got him. All right, guys, game's over. I'm going to head home, download all the photos, start processing them tonight. They will get posted on Max Preps tomorrow, and then I'll start notifying through social media all the different schools and hopefully sell some photos that way. Uh, in the meantime, Enjoy some photos from this game and a game I shot earlier in the week.